because it's because like a wrap. So it's two ways. One thing is that we don't memory and development. If you have to spend an order, it's still 60. I don't remember. It's so chesty, it's 60. It just takes a second for the camera to respond and the content down. No, I what you're asking. Oh, there we go. Google. Yeah. It, it oftentimes it takes a little bit of time it starts up. I had a friend that had and The call will come in in a second, too. Use the call is not going to be I was like, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Or are you doing the first okay. second? Should we get yeah. unmuted then? Sure. Yeah. 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 It's very, it's so you're, so you're, you're, you're also getting your PhD in physics. Yeah. 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 But you have to have an intuition of what to do with physics. But the intuition is that you are not going to like here, I took major, and it's two credits, so we have to do that twice a week. Are we ready? I don't know. Nothing is mandatory. Oh, before you start, may, may I just ask, um, I just noticed actually from previous, uh, previous meeting, I noticed a few new faces. And we probably can introduce the new people. Or maybe mm -hmm. each of uh, uh, you know everyone, right? Um, it's only me who doesn't know you. <laughs> well, yeah. Or not only me. Well, I've met him briefly. I know him. I know Dan. Okay. I'm Nathan. I'm a master's student in the physics department. This year? So you are I started this year. Just started. Yeah. Okay. And I guess David can introduce <laughs> yourself as well as a new student. I'm David. I'm a... PhD student in chemistry. Should we introduce ourselves for them? If. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they need it, because it looks like they might know you already, no? I don't know. Okay, so you can <laughs> I'm Levi. I'm in uh, Svetlana's group. I'm uh, starting my fourth year. I'm Javed. I'm working in Svetlana's same group. I'm starting for fifth year now. Of undergraduate? <laughs> <laughs> fifth year undergraduate. Yeah. Dan, I'm Dmitri. I'm, I have completed my third year in chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm Braden. I'm a first year of master's in physics. You came, uh, you also local NDSU student, you were undergraduate at NDSU no, before? I no? was an undergraduate at MSU. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is? Right, like right across. Just the across the river. river. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm an undergraduate in Svetlana's program. So. Program? <laughs> Svetlana's <laughs> program sounds good. I, I should really have a Svetlana's program. <laughs> and you're a senior, right? Yes, I'm a senior. Should I add where I went to college then? <laughs> sure. But we kind of know, right? You, we, we had this discussion before. You were talking with Erin, I guess. Yeah. I, I went to... She was also from... Uh, yeah. Wisconsin. I've 
got my undergrad at Wisconsin Whitewater. Everyone knows Dion. I got my undergraduate at MSUM. And you I'm did? Really? I didn't know this. I didn't wow. know that. I just know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know. Okay. I thought you did it in Bulgaria, no? You did it here. No, you did it here. Ah, okay. I got my high school diploma in Indiana. In, in the United States, too. How, oh, when how, did you move here? I how many years you are in the United States? I came States here when I was 11th grade, and I did 12th grade in the United States. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I... What? I, I said we should really introduce ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Fatima. I graduated from the physics department. I'm working in Dr. Kellen's group. I did my PhD from UND. And then, when are you going to get your PhD? Are you going to? This is a provocative question. I was, yeah, I'm uh, thinking about uh, November ish. Oh, really? November ish. So, so, oh, which <laughs> oh, November, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. It's not funny. <laughs> it could have turned out to be next. Time. <laughs> Set the deadline by uh, date for deadline 31st. Is it doable? Yes, if you do not specify the month. If you do not specify the month. Maybe someone knows you. Hey, I'm uh, Bakhtir Rasulov, uh, the assistant professor at the politics and parliament materials department. And just uh, since we kind of touching this subject, um, on Tuesday, uh, usually, uh, we have a group meetings for for Dmitri's group, right, on Tuesday at 4 p.m. But uh, you you will have one hour meeting by five, right? Well, typically it's two hours, but once there will be once means next week. Yes, <laughs> September we'll do 20. short short meeting for one hour, and then second hour will be collaborative meeting with several other groups. Right. So we have a meeting for actually mainly talking about machine learning, the uh, uh, chem informatics, right? So this is dealing with a grant which we have together in collaboration. So you not really need to come if you're not interested. Uh, but those who are interested, you are welcome for next Tuesday meeting to do the discussion. So there will be the thing. Uh, I don't know whether she will bring some students as well. You probably come with your students, right? Well, yeah, at least one or two students. Your students will be mainly presenting the information, right? Uh, I'll ask you. Okay. Yeah, so this is an announcement for next Tuesday at 5. So you, if everyone brings students, would be enough space? <laughs> so, I guess we're uh, uh, we is, have enough. Just is that room. going to be like a recurring meeting or just a one and done? One, once per month. So once this meeting we're going to do once per month. Would it be possible to shift the two meetings? No. Because I teach at five. No. So I can never make uh, it. Dr. Soon cannot. Okay. Well, Not this time at least. What about the, October, the October 30th? Time, we next have time it's going to be different. Yeah. At four? It's going to be at four. Let's do okay. okay. Next time it's going to be at four. But four to five, you are available. But if you it, it depends on how fast yes. my lab gets done. But I cannot do it at Oh, five. you have one lab before then one lab. I have two and then five. But and uh, if you do not present, if you just listen, it's uh, Oh, it will be recorded as well. Okay. And just enjoy it. Okay, well, thanks for coming and allowing me to speak. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> um, I haven't prepared anything, but I have to. So next um, Friday. Friday, yes, I do have a presentation on the uh, UND seminar, and it's just time to organize my uh, thoughts. Uh, if you are busy with your own things, you can just open uh, cell phones and laptop and relax and uh, do, do your things. So, watch movies. And watch movies, yes. I'll just try to tell what we are doing at the group. <laughs> so you don't want to watch it? No, no. <laughs> what what we are doing at the group and uh, um, organize thoughts and results for the for the seminar. Basically, in, uh, there will be first part, uh, just a little story what the group is doing. And at the end, there will be three movies. So just three slides with three movies, which I really want to show, and the rest is just decoration, which uh, this I, I will try to skip or and not to focus on them unless uh, it is really really necessary. But total amount of slides in uh, what, what I put here is like one hundred thirty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
guys, we probably spend night here. No. <laughs> Because I'm escaping in five minutes. Okay, there are a couple of grants going on. There are a couple of grants pending. Ah, oh, there is. And you have to present it as well? No, I do not. Uh, it's his acknowledgement. His uh, I will not show it there. Well, actually, the, the meeting uh, next time will be about this organic metallic uh, grant, which is collaborative with uh, several groups and. Uh, uh, led by Professor Rasulev. Um, one of the, well, I'm not telling about accomplishments at each group that are coming to this meeting, only the one subgroup. And one of the accomplishments were the back cover of, of this journal, and I will partially cover the science behind this uh, image in the presentation. And uh, since uh, last overview meeting, there were, well, I'm, I'm showing sure it not to break, but to give credit to the people who contributed here. So, uh, Diane did a nice paper recently, published a couple of days ago. No uh, cover, no cover page. We tried, we, we tried hard, but uh, it's very competitive. Next mm -hmm. time. Uh, you won't get uh, journal of physical chemistry letters with uh, cover. Uh, there is a collaborative uh, with, um, work with Dr. Burkhaus uh, in uh, Camp Home. And uh, there are a uh, couple of conference proceedings by Aaron and by, by Fatima since uh, June, so it's very, very recent things. I also try to, to cover them partially. And there are things um, published at the beginning of the, of the year. Okay, so something is being considered. So if uh, you are if Fatima or Aaron, <laughs> and you do not see it uh, published, it means it's still under review. Uh, there is a paper written by Yuvon that uh, just hangs on me for submission for last year. Uh, and there are a couple of projects that are either ready in scientific part and go through writing, and uh, there are projects that are, are either ongoing or uh, high priority to be completed soon. So Braden would be interested that uh, his uh, ideas inspired other people to, uh, to do things and maybe one can combine efforts and do, do things together. Uh, okay, so recently many of you have uh, visited Boston, you know, like water stuff at the, the, at the waterfront. There was a convention center, and um, many of you have just seated and, and listened to the presentations on uh, multiple exciton, which is like interesting for DM, on uh, relaxation, which is what uh, Aaron is, is doing, uh, like methods which we all need to do the perovskites, which is uh, ma ma material of uh, today and future. And uh, there were um, dynamics of, of interface, uh, photocatalysis, no materials, and things related to cheminformatics where it's actually presented. And you may recognize your name here in the, in the poster session. <laughs> so, what is interesting is that uh, American Chemical Society uh, noticed the symposium and offered to follow up uh, by a book with proceedings. So, consult with your advisor and there will be space to fit in a couple of chapters. If, if you Who would like to write a chapter for the book? <laughs> if you, well, How many pages? <laughs> no limits. Can be can be 100, can be 5. You can publish your dissertation. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> so, some of you may, if you were speaking, you obtain an invitation either from organizers or from a robot. So, like, deadline is coming. De deadline is coming up. And by the way, when is the deadline? Um, right, right now, there are negotiations with ACS. They are not uh, gentle. They try to require everything by thirty first. Of November. 
or whatever, the centuries of November, and we are negotiating to extend it for a couple of months because most of people will be not able to, uh, uh, to complete things at short notice. Um, so, actual research. Re there will be two chapters. One on reactions, chemical reactions, since some of us are in chem chemistry department. And second, uh, the uh, dynamics of excited electronic states associated with change of energy, migration of charge uh, in, in space for photovoltaic and light imaging applications. But first part is uh, reactions. So why we need reactions and what are benefits of them uh, in, uh, in this audience, although we, most of us are interested in nanostructures, in excited states. So one of the aspects why we need uh, reaction is fabrication of nanostructures uh, in order to follow the goals of tuning the properties of nanostructures towards uh, high efficiency of uh, photoluminescence quantum yield or um, high yield of uh, photovoltaic process of charge transfer, one needs to control properties of nanostructures which can be done by growing them at a certain size and shape and by tailoring their coverage, the ligands on the surface. And this is mostly challenge for chemistry rather than uh, um, physical setup aspect of, of, this, of this problem. So there are surface reactions that happen just activated by heat and uh, one needs to do a lot of dirty work of trying multiple configurations and uh, checking the binding energies and preferable sites for special ligands, finding special sites, and uh, so it is for covering surface nanostructures. Another aspect is how the actual nanostructure is growing in either colloidal or gas phase. So how the small molecules of precursors nucleate together to form a nanostructure. And originally uh, this uh, uh, research uh, was connected to um, attempts to break molecules on, on, on the parts. So that uh, it's not connected to what I'm going to show today, but it was forming a basis. So this is a um, project that are going on in collaboration with uh, Dr. Brookhouse. So surface of uh, so-called uh, wet Hawaii perovskite can be term, uh, covered by different ligands, and one just ex directly measures binding energy by uh, practicing thermal desorption. So looking at which temperature the ligand desorbs into vacuum if one heats it. And, uh, by assuming uh, mechanisms of co-adsorption and uh, different binding sites, one can uh, find computed energies close to what is observed on experiment. And uh, so by now, what one has completed is adsorption of um, carbon dioxide, which is stops being dioxide on the surface. It finds um, residual water from the moisture, forms bicarbonate, same like a drinking soda, right? And it ad adsorbs much higher than uh, carbon dioxide itself. The ongoing research deals with uh, formic acid and the interest to it because it's the simplest um, carboxylic group, which is typically used in um, quantum dot ligand uh, formation. So here it goes, uh, it desorbs at much lower energy and uh, there are some additional challenges to resolve. So reactions. Uh, reactions can be activated by heat, uh, photo excitation or intense photo excitation. And in order to treat this, one may um, one has to take into account that uh, electromagnetic radiation oscillates quick, but if it oscillates quick, then your operators, your Hamiltonians, change in time 
really quick, which makes your life hard. It's numerically untractable. But if one practice so-called rotating wave approximation, then quickly oscillating terms drop and uh, Hamiltonian becomes either time independent or very, very slowly changing. So there is an attempt to combine the standard tools for occluring structure calculation and the um, handmade inclusion of the light to matter interaction term into, into Hamiltonian, which makes a system of uh, coupled equations for both electronic and nuclear degrees of freedom. So this uh, slide can be mostly interested for Dean, and maybe he will develop a criticism. So if your electronic system undergoes continuous radiation by light, there are so-called Rabi oscillations of the occupation and also of off-diagonal elements of, of, of density matrix. And the amount of flips, of Rabi flips, is proportional to so-called area under the, under the pulse. You integrate the interaction Hamiltonian and convert it in unit less angle. So 2 pi angle means return to original state, pi means uh, flip, what was occupied becomes unoccupied. And if one assumes that instead of CW excitations, there are trains of pulses, then flips of occupations happen only when uh, these uh, pulses do arrive. And the occupation uh, suddenly jumps from occupied to unoccupied. In some sense, uh, so, uh, this could be interesting for Javit and for Levi. This is similar to surface hopping, when one assumes that uh, off-diagonal elements do not play any, any role other than auxiliary abstract thing, and actual occupations are either ones or zeros. So this is the same um, protocol coming from, from, from different consideration. But if one accepts an approximation of replacing continuous pulse by a train, continuous irradiation by train of pulses, then one can assume that uh, electronic states are always either occupied or unoccupied, which is very comfortable for numerical calculations. You do not need fractural occupation, you just have uh, occupations equal zero or, or one. And in uh, this approximation, you just add a protocol, a computational protocol that uh, allows jumps of occupation between zero and one in the necessary states, and you run a simultaneous uh, uh, couple system of equations for electronic degrees of freedom and uh, Newtonian mechanics for uh, nuclear degrees of freedom with understanding that forces do depend on occupations. So, originally, and uh, Professor Rasulov left, but uh, it's his credit of uh, converting outcome of the time-dependent excited molecular dynamics into mass spectra. Because if there are either fragmentation or uh, association of products, one can uh, re, one can convert the outcome of the simulation, the uh, trajectory into uh, distribution of products at, at certain masses. So irrelevant thing. It was just a uh, guinea pig, which has nothing to do with Guinea or with pig. Um, application of this methodology to fragmentation of metal-organic complexes with one metal antonite in the center, center and uh, uh, cyclopentadiene on the um, sides and lowest excitation is from ligand to metal. And upon become less and less stable. So because uh, energy is being pumped by light into this uh, degrees of freedom, 
and uh, in some sense it is equivalent to um, ramping up the temperature linearly. So it grow, if one follows the temperature, it grows to uh, about 10,000 Kelvin, and it's enough to break several bonds. And if one watches this uh, movie long enough, it uh, shows formation of uh, several products, right? There will be acetylene, uh, hydrogen molecule, and different uh, metal to carbon uh, intermediates and, and, and products. Um, the goal of this project was to excite it to such a state that a metal ion will stay alone. And if it doesn't happen, explain why. In some sense, one can uh, interpret it as single metal ion catalyzing the reaction uh, of hydrocarbons. Uh, just justification that uh, if one goes from uh, DFT to multi reference, the trends of uh, energies of intermediates are not, not so bad. And here are the mass spectra. This is only justification of the method. So the experimental uh, observations and uh, computed mass spectra. So if you start with heavier fragment, start to uh, crack it with light. It peels off hydrocarbons and it becomes lighter, 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 and there are several peaks in, in the mass spectra. Okay, and now the recent work of Dr. Yuval Khan. So, uh, before method was tested for dissociation, for fragmentation, breaking things on contrary pieces, and now it is for association. Uh, there is an experimental group of uh, Professor Phil Bujak at NDSU. They designed uh, practical ways to synthesize uh, reliable um, cyclohexacylene molecules, which are which have unique properties. So it is a transparent liquid which uh, converts into solid silicon if you radiate the light or heat. So why don't we try to see if the excitation can help to polymerization, or if you want to be conservative, to dimerization of these uh, precursors. With understanding that if this reaction goes uh, far enough, finally it will uh, generate uh, silicon nanostructures, like quantum dots, thin fumes, nanorods. And uh, if the natural expect uh, intuitive expectations are that if we start from uh, small size precursor molecules, they would uh, have spectra in the uh, UV range of, uh, and as soon as association and polymerization goes on, it shifts to the uh, reddish part of the uh, spectrum. So the Molecular dynamics, if one scrolls it far enough, uh, may give things um, so it's time dependent excited state molecular dynamics may give some intermediates uh, close to dimerization. But analysis of the intermediates along the molecular dynamics is really complicated because the uncertainty of atomic positions and part of the energy from, from uh, kinetic motion. So if uh, one compares ne two nearby time steps, they may uh, have drastically different potential energy, although uh, total energy. So one of the tricks uh, that uh, Dr. Han uh, designed was so called all intermediates, when one takes snapshot at each point of the dynamics and then uh, relaxes it, assuming that in the uh, experimental apparatus um, the reaction, the jet of precursors goes through focus of laser and then when they pass further they, can, they have an opportunity to dissipate energy and, and cool down. And if, uh, and if it is um, ensemble one can uh, analyze distribution of possible products. So through this uh, poly intermediate, it uh, uh, shows uh, formation of uh, like it's not quantum dots, but clusters with multiple 
three and even four coordinated silicons. Well, uh, in the original uh, precursor, they all are two coordinated. Right? Each silicon has only two silicon neighbors. Right? Well, uh, there are some additional technical details. I don't know if they are super interesting, but depending on the original orientation of the uh, precursors, the pathway of the barriers or reaction steps uh, is, is different. So, but um, this is too high of energy to overcome from uh, through heating. Therefore, one needs um, at least one or sometimes more than one optical quantum to overcome these barriers. So it's energies of uh, intermediates as long as reaction goes. But the final products, uh, independent of original orientation, come to uh, similar configurations. Well, we all do like exploring these two states. Uh, originally, density of states gives a uh, gap or 4 EV, and as we go to this association, it shrinks. Well, in calculation, with uh, uh, DFT, which is a little substandard to uh, predict gaps, it shrinks too much. It gives just a qualitative trend of uh, uh, larger cluster, shorter gap. In fact, uh, the experimental observation of the first steps of the reaction and uh, it goes through minutes rather than uh, hundreds of femtoseconds because they have lower intensity and in simulation we exaggerate the intensity. It uh, shifts to red part much more conservative, not as in calculations, but the trend is there. So the longer the reaction goes, the redder uh, becomes the, the spectrum. If one would continue this uh, problem, one would probably try to look at the intermediates and uh, process them with high level methods, at least TDFT or maybe uh, some uh, multi reference or excitronic methods. So, this is only a trend how uh, the gap is changing. And there are additional tools that we'll discuss later how to um, convert electronic structure along the molecular dynamics into photoluminescent spectrum. Basically, it would uh, correlate with just uh, oscillator strengths at the lowest transition. With some uh, additional factor for the uh, width. And there is an interesting observation that as long as uh, the change wavelengths of initial excitation or original orientation of the precursors, one can observe both fragmentation onto a smaller, um, like silane gas with only uh, single silicon, or polymerization with heavier fragments. But by changing uh, wavelengths of excitation, one can control and uh, enhance one pathway against another one. Okay, done with reactions. Now a little bit more uh, fun stuff for electrodynamics in uh, nanostructures. So since we were already talking with uh, silicon uh, nanostructures, they can be, pro any nanostructures can be prepared with different dimensionality, like quantum dots, nano, Rods, nano wires, thin films, and bulk is not nano. <laughs> um, in nano structures, the uh, everything except quantum dots. There is an additional degree of freedom for electrons. They can they have translational motion, right? and uh, it means that electronic structure needs to be recomputed at each. Uh, value corresponding to this uh, translational motion, a uh, different uh, average value of momentum. So this makes the situation a little more 
complicated and uh, additional tricks need to be added to a standard approach for uh, electron dynamics. So, as, as soon as uh, momentum gets higher, the energy of the orbital of the same symmetry gets uh, also increases. So same like uh, uh, in classical mechanics, just kinetic energy, velocity squared, momentum squared. And we are looking for dynamics of how the photo excited electron flow uh, migrate in uh, energy. So this uh, challenge is uh, by today partially addressed by Fatima, who is uh, sitting on the last row. And I'm not going to show technical details, just a brief overview. And my goal is to just show one more. The rest of information is just to prepare. Uh, well, totally, there are highlighting four moves. I already showed one, and I want to show other four. Um, so there are nanowires which are infinitely long uh, sticks of, of, of silicon, and uh, because of the crystalline structure, they can be grown in different crystallographic directions. So uh, silicon has the same structure as diamond, and one, uh, in diamond you have this tetrahedral, and you can align with one of these tetrahedral things or put it to like 45 degrees to them or, or other degrees. And the, if you continue it uh, infinitely along of one of the directions, uh, the structures will be different. And it can be made on experiment. So one of the features uh, in this dependence of electronic, electronic energy of momentum is that it is not always growing as you increase momentum. In some uh, uh, exotic, or maybe not always exotic, in some uh, materials, you can increase momentum and energy will decrease. And this trend for increasing and decreasing energy as a function of momentum can be different for occupied and unoccupied orbitals, for electrons and so So for intuitive, normal, um, materials, the minimum energy will correspond to zero momentum and it will be maximum for holes and minimum for electrons. This is standard and intuitive. And it, it's called uh, direct gap in conductor. But sometimes it, uh, the lowest gap happens uh, between uh, occupied at one level of momentum and unoccupied of another level of momentum which needs a uh, special treatment. So the challenge in uh, this work was to take into account transitions which either conserve momentum or violate uh, conservation of momentum. Violate not in a sense that uh, violate rule of momentum conservation, but momentum departs from electronic subsystem and is being transferred to a uh, subsystem of nuclear degrees of freedom. So, Electron stops, it was moving, it stopped moving, like in, in beware. And then a nuclei or set of nuclei started moving. And we are focusing only on the electronic degree of freedom. Therefore, we allow transitions with uh, local violation of uh, momentum conservation. Yes? I have a one confusion in this, in my confusion. Is yes, yes. One yes. Is. So, when you're changing the momentum, is it like it's changing the momentum, but the electron in the same state and then is going to certain momentum and then is relaxed. Is it something like that, or during the change in the momentum, it's also changing the state of the electrons? We do allow both, and we see that change, simultaneous change of uh, band and uh, momentum is non zero. But it is a numerical observation. Intuitively, one would expect that one can decompose any transitions on either vertical transitions and then change of momentum change along one. Yes, it was our original expectation, but yeah. numerical results show opposite, that uh, it can go on a diagonal. And here is movie number two that uh, I would like to show. 
so run it several, several times. Actually, yes. So yes. <laughs> um, but these results, when you say, say that you, this is what uh, your calculations show, I think it was based on some of the talks which we discussed in the summer. And there was a question about normalization. Yes. Is it based on this already, oh, at least checking these normalization issues, or it just? No, no. Normalization is additional issue which uh, will affect the reported rates of overall pooling of, of hot carrier. Normalization doesn't affect the in individual rates. The normalization question is uh, how does one construct the matrix of individual rates in order to, uh, to consider the complete dynamics. So calculation of individual transition rates are independent of uh, discussion of normalization. And they seem to, right now we do not see any problems with them. Normalization, yes, it needs to be, it is not added yet, and it is the next thing to do. But uh, even with all possible improvements, the individual rates will not be changed. They are what they, where, where they are, and uh, there is no reason to change them. So what do we see here? Um, this is diagram showing distribution of charge density as function of energy and momentum at different time steps, time, points of time. Uh, it's only for unoccupied uh, orbitals for electrons where holes are skipped. So just systematically, by uh, one can assume different initial state. So here it is supposed to be some non-zero momentum, some non-zero energy above above the room. And then these uh, yellowish circles show how along the time there is a superimposed uh, distribution of charge density at different energies and different values of momentum. The red line shows expectation value of both energy and momentum at given point of time, so goes along this line. And it is interesting, but ex quite, uh, quite expected, that for this um, indirect gap uh, nanowire, the final state, final value of momentum will be non-zero, not at gamma point, but somewhere in between. Another interesting observation is that it will be not purely one state, but it will be superposition of, uh, of several states with different values of momentum. So since their difference is uh, not very large compared to thermal energy, it will be uh, simultaneous coexistence of several values of momentum in the Lumo orbital. Uh, why there are three points? Because it is a numerically demanding and uh, expensive calculation. In the ideal world, one would repeat it with finer grid of uh, values of momentum to, to get more continuous rather than discrete uh, distribution. So what's your delta in momentum? Is it point 0.1? It's uh, point 0.16 or something like this. So it's, it's the same as those, yes. those points, um, but not it the is, same data. It is 0. 0.5 divided by 4. Point 0.125, about. So, so can is I say that the like final point, the initial point, is a realistic point? We can compare in the real scenario. But this continuous pathway is maybe not the real way. Is that something like that? Um, experiment, well. Real things are only what is uh, measured in mean, experiment. In practical, practical sense, can it, in practical sense, they, can it cross this like continuous path in the in the sub gap, or it should be vertical in that sense, in sub gap? Well, even if there are no states in between, uh, if you make superposition of states before and after, uh, average yeah. expectation value can be in between. This is an argument why uh, some people like uh, surface hopping against Ehrenfest. Because uh, Ehrenfest uh, has uh, average value in between actual states. But here it is expectation value 
between the eigenvalues is, is normal thing. It just represents superposition. Okay. Yeah. Yes? This could be a really stupid question, but... Well, so I can answer with a very stupid <laughs> answer. <Yeah. laughs> so as the electron goes down, right, should the, should the energies of the, the look of the, the molecular orbital uh, as a function of momentum change shape in response to the electron moving? Oh, it's an excellent question. Let's analyze it together. <laughs> <laughs> so the orbitals really look very similar. So this is Luma, this is Luma plus one, right? And uh, it just it takes too much uh, energy to draw orbitals for other bands. So uh, here it, this diagram on the left illustrates only two lowest band in this dynamics. And uh, definitely we see some change as we, uh, with one band, we, we go along. But it is a really hard task to identify what is being changed. So silicon has a diamond-like structure. So it's expected, expected to be like sp3 for occupied. For unoccupied, it, it is some superposition of uh, p orbitals, right? p orbitals meaning uh, there will be no density on the atom itself. It will be nearby, which we can kind of see here. Right? So uh, atoms are not covered by the CO density. But what happens further is too much for human brain. If you if you come up with um, ideas, please communicate them before next Friday. <laughs> So one can uh, see that maybe there will be nodes and lobes along the um, axis where, where those are continuous. Maybe uh, some of the orbitals have more density on actual bond, like bonding orbitals, and some have, uh, here it is more anti-bonding character, but it really needs chemical intuition. How this uh, superposition of p orbitals come up with more complicated uh, envelope function or what, what, is, what is going on when we change the momentum. Typically, higher the momentum, larger number of, of the fringes. And here, there is zero point, so there is at least one fringe. But it is very hand waving. Systematic analysis of orbitals is a big challenge. Can you get an analysis from pro car Like positive dose quality? Pro, 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 pro car. car. We we'll, uh, show that all they all are on silicon p orbitals. It may show distribution how they're composed of, of, on uh, px, py, pz. So it, it could be insufficient. It, yes. Couldn't you just subtract or take a weighted average of these of these cube, of these cube files, and then as it progresses between them, would be the average. And then you can That's a great idea. And. Um, Main expert who is uh, doing this calculation may try to do. It. And there was a, a little uh, technical challenge how to label orbitals because uh, now they are labeled by two quantum numbers index of orbital and uh, value of momentum. And one wants, uh, it, it is much more comfortable to have just one index. And one can combine them. Like uh, for Lumo and different values of momentum, we progress number of uh, states that we did linearly, and then we start over in the next band. We continue the fact, seven, eight, right? So number of uh, actual states, or how to say, bands with special value of, of, of momentum is uh, bigger than typical the number of orbitals right okay um, perfect kites are cool <laughs> I would love to have uh, some results on the perfect nano wires but things take take time um, there there are several challenges in basic questions about perovskites and uh, uh, but most of them are inspired by their applications for either photovoltaic or light emitting. And for light emitting, 
several of you are involved in the uh, quantum dot business, you know that depending on the quality of the um, surface perceivation, the lowest transition can be bright or dark. So there is a question how to perceivate uh, surface so that the quantum yield of photoluminescence will be larger. Um, best light emitters are quantum dots. But uh, in simulation, one needs to have uh, termi surface termination from each side. And sometimes it is easier to study surface effects just on thin films. So this is work of uh, Daniel Ramirez. And uh, he is trying to passivate the surface of lead bromide, uh, cesium lead bromide perovskite by combination of anions and cations according to standard procedures in literature from the Svitron group of uh, Maxim Kovalenko. So when one combines both anions and cations, in average, layer of ligand is neutral, uh, has band gap higher than uh, natural band gap of perovskite, and prevents surface from having trap states. Uh, there is a question uh, to which literature doesn't give an answer. The perovskite uh, lattice can be considered as sub-layers rich in cesium, this uh, sign balance with bromine, and then uh, lead, which is kind of goldish with bromine. So sign or lead, sign or lead, which surface um, one can absorb same ligands on both surfaces but which one is more preferential to have better light emitter. And uh, in order to address this question, uh, Daniel uh, did try to put same distribution of ligands on either cesium rich surface or, uh, well, we do not see it here, lead rich surface. And then uh, there is a, by now, pretty standard procedures to run electron dynamics and follow charge distribution as function of position. So at uh, these diagrams, the x-axis is time and y-axis is uh, position z across the, this lab. So at time zero, in both cases, the um, excitation is distributed in, in space between ligands, approximately in, uh, in the space in between. Well, not always, but it, it was an attempt. And as time passes by, the question is whether both electrons and holes will stay in the slab and keep this uh, latest, lowest uh, excitation emitted, or either electron or hole will migrate to the layer of ligands and uh, quench the luminescence, make the state dark. So for the um, cesium rich layer calculations of Daniel show that it is either being excited all, all the way to uh, state or whole states uh, on the ligand, or even if one starts with equally distributed inside, as time passes by, one of the lowest state would be a trap state for, for a hole. So bluish uh, orange corresponds to electron, bluish corresponds to hole, and uh, this uh, greenish to neutral equilibrium distribution. So according to results by Daniel, the uh, uh, cesium rich surface is bad for uh, photo emission. Is this structure symmetric in Z direction? In Z direction, it is a set of uh, periodic slabs separated by vacuum. But and in, in, X, in X and Y, it is periodic. It is a thin film, infinite thin film. Um, is it symmetric in the Z direction? Like Lower half is upper Identical, yes. Identical, Identical yes. So you see, the, you see blue uh, uh, cyan at the top, cyan at the bottom, right? But then, isn't it charged? What do you mean charged? The charge balances. Uh, each system is neutral. Overall system is neutral. Overall system is neutral. There is, a local, there is a local redistribution of charge, but overall system is neutral. Number of anions and number of cations are equal. So it's 
So in this case, so you know, it's not enrichment. It's just different cut. Like you still it's have, different cut. Yes. You still have the same number of everything. The same number of everything. Cut. So um, good question. And uh, Daniel, where, where you? if you're watching this record, put uh, the answer to Levi's question into the paper. <laughs> so uh, each of the sub layers, either cesium rich or lead rich is stoichiometric. So uh, bromine is one minus, cesium one plus. So there are cesium four, bromine four, so it's neutral. The next layer is uh, uh, lead two plus. Lead two plus, yes. Lead two, bromine four. So it is also uh, compensated. So it has document. how many on the first? So it's on the first, there are four cesium and uh, four bromine. So and the next uh, are two, two leads. Yes, two leads and uh, four bromines. That would be six. So, but lead is two plus, bromine is one minus. Yes, but how many atoms are in that layer? Two. Eight or six? Six. So then, uh, isn't this somewhat like rock salt? No, it's cubic. It's three component. Oh yeah, it's, it's three, three yeah, component. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The so the lead is uh, tetra octahedral. Octahedrally coordinated to bromines, and uh, cesium ions are not uh, coordinated to anything. They are floating uh, in between. They are not literally coordinated. They are just filling the cavity. So, if uh, one repeats these calculations for the uh, lead-rich surface, there is a slight migration of the. Uh, partial migration of the negative charge to the surface. But in average, it is much more homogeneous and it promises to be a better light emitter. So it's the main result of the work by... So I'm just wondering, in the first case, is the whole localized in the top hub or in the bottom surface, is that same thing or is there going to be any significance? No, no, no. Because the uh, system is identical in this case. I mean, in symmetry in this case. Even we need to bring here Daniel for exact um, initial state for this uh, excitation. But uh, it is expected that there will be a progression of the degenerate, if degenerate states of this localized of holes, the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. But uh, in numerical treatment, nothing stays degenerate. Degeneracy is always broken. A spontaneous break of symmetry by some mm -hmm. little corruption of, of geometry. So there is a lift of degeneracy and definitely one will be a little lower and another a little higher. Therefore, we do not see um, equal uh, splitting on the... Uh, so did he also check if the payment system is more stable in one configuration versus the other? Uh, uh, which uh, system? Remove the ligands and check if the bulk material is the reason for this or if it's also, like is, did he check if it's the bulk material properties that are doing this or the ligand? It would be really great if he has uh, done it, so but even if he did, he didn't report it to me. Okay, so <laughs> this might be natural Natural uh, supplement to, to this result, yes. Okay, but this could be coming from the fact that you cut it in different ways, and that could... Well, um, no. not from Daniel, but from literature. The oh, okay. um, surface without termination will, will be a good absorber, but bad emitter. But I guess what I'm asking is, does the surface in and of itself change the property? So if you compare it not with the ligand compared to no ligand, I'm saying, if you compare the two ligands, like your, uh, two surfaces that are cut, 
mm -hmm. without ligand to themselves, mm -hmm. would this property also be shown? Or is it intrinsic to the ligand? I understand your question. Um, intuitively, both would be bad. Without ligands, no matter which cut, both yeah, will be so dark. Okay. Um, it, it's kind of surprising. It was expected that any surface uh, covered by ligands will be bright. But it's interesting that not, not any. Um, one of the... Okay, there is... We are not done with two hours. <laughs> so, one of the applications of perovskites is photovoltaics. When you photo excite it and then uh, there is a photo-induced charge transfer. And then it goes to wheels. So um, the question is how to attach uh, electron acceptor and hole acceptor to this perovskite and pull photogenerated charges out of, of, of this material. So uh, London Johnson is exploring how to pull electrons out of uh, perovskite, and uh, he is trying to uh, address specific challenge. Generally, for photovoltaic cell, one has this perovskite material, light absorber, then um, electron transfer medium, hole transfer medium, and then contents. Right? So he's focusing only on, on this interface and looking onto structure to property relation how the, the uh, material of choice as electron acceptor is titanium dioxide. But there is a, a long uh, way of possible variation of the how one can construct interface. Will it be transfers through space, transfers through chemical bond? What will, what will be, how they will be connected or disconnected? Uh, of course one cannot check everything, but a uh, practical thing would be to um, put either carboxylic or hydroxylic group the, on the interface. And before calculations are started, there are at least two possible expectations to check by uh, computation. One is that um, the perovskite and titanium dioxide will form uh, type 1 heterostructure, or either here or there it will be neutral excitation. Or the alignment of bands uh, will be different for electrons and holes, thus uh, promoting formation of, uh, of charge transfer. So, if you were uh, here on several group meetings, probably you have seen uh, how London was presenting his uh, structures. So, the structure here is perovskite. And here's the cluster of titanium dioxide in two different two different uh, orientations and two different ways to set up connection to to the perovskite side. In um, so first, how the cluster is constructed and why it is cluster rather than. Uh, large periodic bulk of titanium dioxide. If you know that um, this would be interesting and pleasant to hear for Jabot. So if you are trying to build an interface of two semiconductors of different lattice periods, and you are doing not quantum dot as you do, but you try to do periodic, uh, infinite periodic structure, the lattice mismatch would accumulate as you grow cell and it will create strain. And strain means uh, elongation and contraction of bonds which will screw up the energy of uh, the electronic interface. So this is interesting effect but it, uh, it's a lot of work and uh, it's not clear that it is necessary right here. But if you do two quantum dots or quantum dot with uh, periodic structure, this effect is gone. So it is just much more comfortable. To, as you as you know, uh, to work with uh, dots rather than periodic structures with mismatching uh, lattice periods. Same uh, is in work by DN. In your recent publication, you have infinitely periodic nanotube and finite size quantum dot. 
Mm -hmm. So your periodic size doesn't is not suffering of very mismatch. If you try to put a, a nanotube on the periodic infinitely periodic slab of silicon, it will be a big strain and it will be major mm -hmm. complication. Who's making this Venus? Oh, looks really nice. Well, <laughs> he's learning and progressing. So, uh, but if we go to the idea of using cluster instead of periodic, uh, instead of infinitely large slab, then the question is stoichiometry. So titanium, one titanium per two oxygens. But if you cut the surface, here it's like six titanium and six oxygen. It's not non-stoichiometric. So one needs either to put oxygens aside and one needs to avoid trap states. Same as we always do for quantum dots. So uh, one needs to design uh, ligands that will allow this cluster to mimic the gap of the of the periodic bulk or, or, or the cluster. This is not purely uh, creative credit of London. The idea which ligands are to use are known from experiment. In fact, the small clusters of titanium dioxide uh, are possible to crystallize in the super array of, uh, of this quantum dots and uh, positions of each atom can be extracted by X-ray diffraction. So um, there are research groups who do it and uh, here a credit goes to uh, John Fogel who looked through the literature and suggested which coordinates to use. So there are well-defined structures of uh, bright titanium dioxide clusters. And uh, there, are, there are also dual ligands, um, isopropanol and uh, first is formic, second is acetic, right? So, and then if one wants to facilitate charge transfer, these ligands would, cr they will be like isolated. They will not allow charge transfer. So therefore, in order to facilitate charge transfer, one can pull off a ligand, but for chemical stoichiometry, put simplest possible ligand like hydroxyl, and then smash the surface into perovskite. This is kind of too many technical details, but it is a good mimic of what is going on in an experiment. And uh, opposite consideration, if uh, we didn't tear legs of a bug, and didn't smash it into, uh, into the surface. It's just um, almost the same electronic structure, but uh, facing by this um, semi-dielectric carbon-carbon stuff towards the first guy. Very hard question. Yes, please. So are the, are the carbons all the same? You just remove the some of them to the put... So we, we, do not, we do not remove the... Ascetic. Yes. There are six, so uh, stoichiometry is uh, six titanium, six oxygen, okay, so six you just ascetic, and six uh, isopropanol. Okay, so you just remove three isopropanols. Okay. Three isopropanols and replace them by. And the rest oxygen. of the structure is the same. Uh, otherwise, it is the same. Okay? No, 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 it is. I probably by uh, mistake pushed the uh, end button and now I better find this part. So again, there is a comparison of two structures. One with hydroxyl, another with uh, acetic. Part of the cluster facing the uh, perovskite. So London did practice this almost standard protocols for non aromatic dynamics facilitated by nuclear motion and uh, computed the dynamics of charge distribution on the uh, cover as function of position, y-axis, 
end time exercise. So, in case of the acetic acid, original excitation always goes to perovskite. So you see this alternating blue and uh, orange, which means uh, the initial excitation stays on uh, like uh, on on perovskite. Orange means uh, lead five s orbital, and blue would be bromine uh, whatever p six p whatever is available there. And as time passes by, both electron and hole do migrate to titanium dioxide. So there is no charge transfer. Well, there is one very short transient charge transfer. By the way, it is similar to what uh, Dan computed for, for your recent work. So transient short, uh, uh, short period charge transfer. And then later, lowest excitation both blue hole and orange electron stay on the, on the acceptor. So final state is neutral. But if we allow this uh, structural change by replacing isopropanol with hydroxyl, we start on both electron and hole originally on titanium dioxide, and then hole stays on the slab on titanium dioxide, but electron does transfer to the no, hole stays on perovskite, so, and electron jumps to titanium dioxide. So just a little uh, chemical tweaking of the uh, linker makes drastic change in, in the quality. Yes? Is the color scheme the same in the both figures? No. No, no. That's and what I'm finding the, in, the, in the bar by the pic picture, image, their color scheme is... This, this color scheme is a little better. Uh, idea, ideally, the uh, green color in the middle of the rainbow progression should correspond to neutral. But in, in the bar, the color bar is showing the same bar. Yeah. No, but that's from like negative seven to like twenty. And, and that one. That one we can't really see, but it's much smaller. This one is to be correct. Uh, but I have a question. So it appears from the system to your dynamics that the whole I think the yellow uh -huh. goes to the hydroxide groups on the titanium dioxide quantum dot not to the quantum dot itself no I, if we align it would be more like this okay titanium and oxygen so uh, there is no substantial density on, on hydroxide it's more like mediator see those are layers of uh, perovskite and this would match more to this uh, titanium and oxygens. So is there a reason why they stayed on the near atoms instead of going throughout the entire? Yes. Uh, system is polarized and uh, okay. electron and hole attract each other. They're bound in that case still? Well, uh, <laughs> in this methodology, we do not have excitons. We do not compute how they are bound, but they should be. <laughs> Good idea. And now it's time for the. What's going on? <laughs> oh, let me answer your question with, with a movie. Movie number three that I always wanted to show. So it is a favorable configuration. It also from London? Um, he, he contributed substantially. So, you see, originally it was uh, yellow and orange. I didn't see the, the movie, where is the movie? It's, it's, no, colors it's, 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 it's very slow. Yeah. See, see, it develops here. I don't. You don't see the yellow? Oh, it's growing. Yeah, it's yeah. growing colors. The movie is not. <laughs> Be patient. That's it? That's it. <laughs> it's not very dynamic, but it's ex of extremely high scientific value. <laughs> that makes, the makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> if you are not, uh, if we are not so patient, we can just do it like. Oh, this is better. It's At least something happened. It's the long time. <laughs> yeah, the time is long. It's linear time, right? It's not linear time. It's the movie is in log time too. Yes. So you probably take out several steps. You should go with the larger steps. No, then it, 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 it is very choppy. So, 
See, originally there is very small orange density on titanium. Titanium is this blue <coughs> atoms. So there is on um, bromine and uh, lead. And then, Levi, here is your uh, hydroxide. So there, there is <coughs> both electron and hole in the hydroxide. And then it substantially grows the yellow electron density on titanium uh, 3D orbitals. See this uh, like four petal uh, structure. So then why is it so intense on that titanium compared to the other? Because uh, we have... Uh, and, and again, hole is on titanium, right? No, no, wait. Electron. Wait, electron, yes. Don't you know that electrons are yellow? <laughs> so what is uh, that uh, in the yellow circle? Huh? What is this atom in the yellow circle? Well, this is, um, well, color codes do not correspond in this image, but these blue Fire. atoms are titanium. This is not the whole structure, but it, it's only one slice across the middle of the, of the structure. Other, if one adds together and integrate it, it becomes uncom uncomprehensible. And the relative density on titanium is much higher than the relative density, let's say, on bromines, because there are a couple of dozen of bromines and only like six titanium. So if we equally distribute equal amount of charge on bromines and titanium, uh, relative amount on titanium will be higher, right? Your titanium right. is just in one space and bromines are right. all over the right. entire cell. Right. So why not in the oxygen? Why not in hmm? oxygen? In titanium oxide, there are oxygen. Bromine is more aggressive. Not oh, why, 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 why here is not oxygen? Uh, good question. And the answer does exist. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you consider... Because, because, because the age of the no, conduction band is originating from titanium, not from oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you do have only titanium dioxide in your simulation cell, your conduction band is composed of titanium 3D and uh, valence band is composed of oxygen 2P. So, there is, if you do pro-current PDOS, there will be no oxygen-related orbitals in the conduction band. So, it was three movies, one left. <laughs> I don't know about you, I'm already tired. I need to shorten it substantially. No, 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 Take a break. Pretend uh, like next week. No, next week uh, to UND. Yeah, everyone comes to UND to listen to you. No? Huh. I can take three people in the car, but not everyone. Uh, Only maybe a pilot. Is it? Three included me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can put someone in the trunk. <laughs> so you, you can put someone in the middle, in the back, middle. Okay, four. <laughs> oh. So uh, it's methods that sh probably should be sometimes at the beginning. So second order perturbation in respect to electron ion interaction. Uh, couplings are going from uh, the uh, lonely body couplings along on the flight trajectory. If one wants, one can make friendship with uh, Professor Kruzhevsky and his best uh, group members for excitonic effects. And uh, what is important for radon? If you dope, if you functionalize your perovskite with uh, transition metal doping with unpaired spins, one needs to have uh, what? unrestricted DFT, or maybe not DFT, unrestricted Peterson Peter equation. But um, perovskite itself, even without any magnetic doping, perovskite itself is composed of heavy. Uh, ions, lead and uh, bromine, and sometimes iodine, 
and uh, th there are relativistic effects and uh, spin orbit coupling. So the spin is not a good quantum number. And generally, we need to go from just uh, from two components, spin up and spin down. We need to consider them as not independent set of orbitals, but connected uh, spinners. And then all things, including like uh, potential, uh, all operators uh, start having four components, right? So if you do not have spin orbit, it will be only diagonal components. If if you allow them to mix, there will be components. And um, one needs to make appropriate adjustments to the um, oscillator strengths for optical properties and for the non adiabatic couplings. So there are going to be also uh, traces of the fact that uh, orbitals are spinners rather than uh, like two, com two component spinners. Okay, and um, here is an idea of uh, why one would put doping into uh, perovskite uh, quantum dot. So as we already discussed and uh, everyone in this audience knows the ability of material to emit does depend on uh, uh, skills of a chemist who cooks your quantum dots, on presence or absence of Huygens on the surface. Okay. And uh, sometimes Huygens may dissolve, one can choose wrong Huygens or it, it can be not ideal surface. So uh, it's expected that quantum dot is emitted, but sometimes there are surface traps. If one would dope dope uh, the quantum dot with transition metal which uh, experiences uh, splitting due to crystal field. In this bromine environment, crystal field of, uh, well, I can be general, for this specific doping is smaller than a gap of the parent structure. And um, because of several accumulation of several factors, the selection rules become favorable for uh, making transition between this uh, splitted states optically active. And then this optically active state becomes independent of what is going on in the surface. So it will become a very stable emitter with or without ligands. So you just excite and uh, observe emission. It, was, it, it is an original uh, idea. And you see orbitals occupied and unoccupied are localized only on the uh, doping atom. Well, um, if you, uh, yeah, here's the structure, the scaffold of the perovskite, the semi-transparent uh, ligands, and this blue cyan spheres are um, cations of cesium. Without spin orbit, gap will be bigger. This spin orbit, it, it shrinks by more, more than half electron volt. And uh, if one includes spin orbit, one would allow originally forbidden transitions with flip of spin. So if you uh, need to restrict yourself uh, by, um, if you are restricted by unrestricted DFT, uh, then your absorption and emission will will have will be absent of uh, of the spin flip transition, but you can at least uh, consider the density of excited states corresponding to spin flip transition and, and show that they are at uh, right energy. And if it is uh, this spin orbit, then this uh, spin forbidden transition come to the redder part of, of, of a spectrum, and it is what is expected to give uh, larger uh, photoluminescence. So there was an attempt to do standard practice for non-adiabatic dynamics to go along the trajectory, see how the uh, orbital energy change in time how the couplings develop, how the trajectory, and then plug it into the uh, standard protocol for electron dynamics and emission. What, what was uh, potentially dangerous, again, if you are looking at them, 
originally the doping is set up to be octahedral, but along thermalized molecular dynamics, it prefers to become tetrahedral, so it, it breaks symmetry inside this structure and prefers uh, to coordinate, um, to attract four out of six bromines closer and keep uh, other two further apart. So uh, if you do ground state, it may not be absorbed, but if you do excited state, it can be an issue. Not, not that we need to panic, but to pay attention. Maybe it's a discovery. Um, and as time passes by, this uh, coupling between uh, states allow the change of the energy of uh, electron hole versus time. As time passes by, electron floats to lower energy and hole floats up to higher energy. Um, in presence of spin orbit, the relaxation in this one by Aaron is found to be slower because spin orbit brings additional splitting, additional subgaps. This result of Aaron is controversial to a recent publication of uh, Alexei Akimov who claims that presence of spin orbit increases couplings and makes relaxation quicker. So uh, the debates are to come. And here is the movie number four that was already presented in this audience, but uh, I'm emotionally attached to it and would like to show it once again. So uh, again, orange and uh, electrons and blue are holes. And it is for excitation on the undoped uh, perovskite quantum dot slice along the central plane. So as you see, th there are some rearrangements uh, of, the, of the charge density. Um, it's not ideal. Ideally, most of the density should be only in the center. Here, there are some, I wouldn't say traps, but similar trap states where uh, more density are on corners right, right in the center. But the good sign is that amount of density on ligands is, uh, is vanishing. So in, uh, indeed, most majority, substantial majority, of 99% of density of both electrons and holes is on the uh, ore of the structure, on the perovskite scaffold, and uh, it is expected to be a misc. The This uh, sign portions are cesium, they do not carry any density, never. They're just spectators for holding the structure. And uh, their densities on uh, leads uh, and uh, bromines. So bromines are here, and leads are on the corners. Well, um, in this specific uh, set of uh, numerical experiments, the observations were a little against the original expectations. The um, substantial bet, substantial expectations were put to find noticeable strong emission from doped quantum dot. But it was found that undoped is, is much brighter. So uh, the, there is a specific protocol, quite easy to assess uh, quantum yield of photoluminescence. You just uh, make a fraction of radiative over radiative plus non-radiative processes. And uh, for undoped, it was about 33%, and uh, for uh, doped, it was less than 1%. Um, this is not what we want to have. And probably the problem is that uh, single determinant DFT is not the best choice uh, for uh, this uh, excitations uh, for, for, for transition level. Or maybe something else is missed. So just plain uh, addition of spin orbit would be insufficient. Maybe inclusion uh, taking into account excitons would solve this problem and would make this transition brighter. Um, there are some uh, additional effects, so it is, it is an open problem. But uh, 
one experiment, this one is brighter than this one. Well, it's an old slide, now there is much more migration. Well, thank you for your attention. I'm done. Questions one? Questions two? Yes? Just a simple question. So everything you showed was just strict standard PVE? Or did, was something that you showed higher level? We had some HSC-06, but only for analysis of uh, ground state. Maybe I didn't show it, but we, we, we do have it. But computation of non adiabatic couplings with uh, hybrid functionals sure is too much, yes. Um, there are brave heads in the community who tried it once and uh, made conclusions that now you can <coughs> use just as a reference. So uh, Alexei Timur did try it about two, three years ago to, to do a uh, hybrid function for uh, non everybody coupling for very small silicon clusters. And if you read it quickly, it sounds like they have effect. But if you read in, in detail, uh, presence of hybrid, hybrid functionals substantially affect energy of sets, subgaps. As we type. But not the shape of orbitals or uh, couplings. But if one throws everything together, the change of the subgaps noticeably affect the, the final uh, the final result. So the uh, possible well, if the cost of hybrids is like two orders of magnitude higher, one needs to, to design tricks. And one possible trick is to um, correct energies based on hybrid, but keep computing uh, couplings based on uh, pure uh, DFT. So, so GG PP. Okay. More questions? Well, if no, thanks much for. Yeah. Um, maybe there will be meeting uh, next Friday here, but I will be absent. Or should, should no, we cancel the meeting? Because should we cancel or should we? Why? You, you guys, should you have the meeting next Friday? Not yes, no, because we're still waiting for Levi to present his stuff on uh, from Oslo, as you promised. Then you need to record and then we so delay, that delay because of this. Huh? I, I, will I will. Oh, there will be secrets. You, you, you cannot physically record, or you don't have permission to record it. Technically, I need to get stuff from Los Alamos that I think would take longer than a week. So I would rather not record it. Okay. But if both of you are gonna be gone, then I'll try and get it that I could record. I probably will stay. Oh, okay. Because I have heard your presentation. <laughs> oh, and uh, just to remind those, I guess, you also came, right? then it's maybe applicable to you as well. Uh, don't forget to finish your safety 